do not waste this opportunity. There is a small window where we have a little bit of time to introduce a new technology into your business that will totally transform everything and you will be so glad that you did. Let's explore creating a new product with AI. So the year is 2030 and you are sitting there frustrated, annoyed, really giving yourself a slap. And the reason that you're doing that is because you're thinking the AI opportunity was so obvious. It was so obvious in 2025 that I should have been focused on AI. I could have created a product. I could have done more with it. It was an incredible revolution. And you're now seeing all these businesses that acted upon the opportunity and many of them in your industry, you're saying, we could have done that. It wouldn't have been expensive. It wouldn't have been hard. We would have just had to put a little bit of thought into this and we would have been able to create an AI product. So good news, it's not 2020, 30, it's 2025 and the opportunity is still here. And it's the biggest opportunity in the world. I think one of the biggest opportunities for every single business is to think about how you would productize what you do using AI. So I wanna give you a simple model, a simple way of thinking about this so that you can begin the process of thinking about how you would spin out an AI product. Now, I've done this myself with a couple of products recently. So uh, we created Score App, which came out of an agency called Sotec. Sotec was an agency that used to build and develop technology. And one of the main products that we were selling was online assessments and online quizzes that we could create on WordPress. And then out of that, we built Score App. And then in there, we put a lot of AI technology that has helped it to scale and it's helped add a lot of value to our customers. We also worked with Rethink Press, which is a publishing company, and took all of the knowledge about how to write a great book and we put that into an AI product called bookmagic.ai. And now that is rapidly growing at the moment, about 8% per month. At the moment, I'm working on a new AI startup from the agency August Recognition. We're taking some of the best insights and information out of that agency and putting it into a new product, which is all about winning awards using AI. So what I'm doing in my businesses is we're looking at all the ways that we can take our intellectual property and turn it into a scalable AI driven product. If we were to go back in time to 2007, when the iPhone launched and the App Store launched shortly after, we could easily say, wouldn't it have been smart to create some sort of iPhone app for the App Store? And of course, it was obvious at the time that that was gonna be a huge opportunity. So good news, it's not 2030, it's 2025, and you've still got time, you've still got this opportunity. So let's explore how you might do that with this simple model. Okay, so in order to create an AI application, an AI product, we wanna think about this through this Venn diagram. We wanna to bring together three key concepts. So the first concept is the ability to get user data, right? So you wanna be able to get people's data, uh, something that they will tell you about themselves. So this might be them filling in a form, it might be uh, filling in a portal, uh, it could be connecting their system up to something, but in some way you have to get user data that um, is unique to a particular customer. A customer's data has to come in here uh, at some point. The next one is that we need to get your intellectual property. So something that you know about the world that most people don't know about the world, and that's your intellectual property. And then the third thing is some sort of a user interface uh, or user experience that makes the whole thing feel lovely. So if you take Book Magic for a minute, we're getting you, the author, to write the type of book that you want, the types of chapters that you want, uh, you're um, putting in the perfect reader, we're using our intellectual property. We know exactly how great books are written. So we have unique prompts that we can do. We can have a framework or a guideline that we can steer you towards using our intellectual property. And we've put that all into a nice portal so it's really easy to use and it's lovely and it looks good and it's colorful and it actually has everything that you need nicely laid out. So the user interface is really good. We're collecting data from authors as they're writing their books and we're using our intellectual property to improve what it is that they've done. If we take something like uh, the new product that we're gonna be launching with awards, uh, we've got you telling us what kind of awards you wanna win and what your business does and how it's unique. We've got our intellectual property of all, the huge database of awards that are all over the world and different categories and what they're looking for and what a great entry should look like. And then we've got a user interface, a portal that we're building so that it all looks absolutely beautiful and it easily interacts. Now, when those three things intersect, in the middle of that, what we can do is we can feed that information to a large language model, right? Think about ChatGPT. Behind ChatGPT is a company called OpenAI. OpenAI have something called an API call, and an API call is just your computer system talking to their computer system, and it all happens very automatically. It's not advanced. If, you're, if you have an IT person that you can access, they can help you with this idea of what an API call is. So, 
This information goes over to uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI and it goes through the language model and then it sends some information back and it starts communicating with your system. And what the customer experiences, or the person who's using this system experiences, is that they put a little bit of information in and a lot comes back. And it's like, wow, this is incredible. I told you a little bit and now I get all this information back. Um, I was a little bit confused and now I've got clarity. Uh, I was frustrated and now I feel like I'm in flow, right? So the, if it's working properly, a little bit of inf inputs brings back something really great. So they plant a little seed in your, in your system and out comes a, a whole apple tree full of apples. So the goal here is to combine the user data with the intellectual property with the user interface, right? And communicate with a large language model such as OpenAI or any of the other ones that you wanna use, right? And then that goes back and forth between the systems. Now, for many, many years, a SaaS company or a software as a service company was essentially a nice user interface, a user experience interface sitting on top of a database. It was essentially an Excel spreadsheet with a really nice wrapper around it. And a lot of SaaS companies were just essentially that, a database with a nice wrapper. And the next round of SaaS companies are going to be a large language model with a really nice wrapper. What is that nice wrapper made of? Unique user data, your intellectual property, the stuff that you know, and all packaged up into a nice user interface, right? So that's the three things that we wanna have there. Now this might sound really complicated, but the truth is that you're kind of already doing this in many businesses. You're interacting with customers, asking them questions, finding out information about what they need and what they want, what they're trying to achieve. You're then processing that with your expert knowledge and giving them some guidance and giving them some understanding and giving them more back than that, that, that they gave you. So they give you a little bit of information about themselves, then you give them some insights and your current business is a way of interfacing with that. So your current business, whether it's a physical location or an online location, you're providing some sort of way of interfacing. So all we're really doing is kind of taking what you already do in your business and we're just doing it in a different way. We're adding some artificial intelligence to it, but we're just kind of automating the process. Now, once this is all working, you might charge a subscription for this. So maybe you charge $39 a month, right? Maybe you get 500 people who sign up. Maybe that doesn't happen in year one, but it could happen over a couple of years. And by the time you've built this, you might spend 20 or 30,000 building something at a basic level like this. And then you've built something that makes 20,000 a month and it just ticks over and it's providing people with value and you've got yourself a nice little subscription uh, product. If you can do that, you'll be able to build upon it. You'll be able to advance it. And maybe you'll get it to the point where you can have two subscriptions. You can have 39 a month and maybe 99 per month. Uh, and now you've got a thousand people who are on the 99 a month and maybe 1500 people on the 39 a month. Suddenly you've got a scalable technology business that can be adding value to people all over the world. Um, this doesn't have to necessarily get to massive numbers because unlike the old world of SaaS, where things were incredibly expensive and difficult to build, in the AI world, the cost of building this stuff has dropped through the floor. The cost of doing something absolutely magical with these LLMs has dropped down to a little unit cost that you can factor into the price of subscription. So you may not have the skills to do this on your own. You may need to recruit a little bit of a team. You may need to think about who you could reach out to online who could help you with this. Maybe you've got someone in your network who could help you with this. Maybe you could get a technical co-founder and start a new business that does this. But I just want you to get thinking about how simple it could be to just combine what you know about customers with your intellectual property with a nice user interface that creates a brand new product that could scale. And if you do this, it could absolutely change your life by 2030. By the year 2030, you might have 100,000 a month coming in on a product like this, and it might completely set you free because you're adding value to people regardless of where you are in the world or what you're doing. So something to think about, something to explore, something to make a little bit of time for in the week ahead. Can you create an AI product in the next couple of years so that when you get to 2030, you don't have regrets that you didn't at least try to do something with this AI revolution and your business. Okay, I'm gonna make some more videos about AI and how I'm using it and what we're doing with it other than building products, just how we're using it in the business. Uh, if you want to see those videos, they'll be coming soon. So subscribe to the channel, give us a like, give us a comment. Um, and also I'm running a series of live events. There'll be a link in the description where you can register for the live events that we're running on Zoom. Uh, I'd love to see you there as well. All the best.